circle omega naught with radius 1 is tangent to the positive x-axis and the line y equals to x. And we see omega naught right here. And after that, we are going to keep on inductively constructing circles omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, and so on, as shown in the diagram, such that omega sub n is tangent to the positive x-axis, the line y equals to x, and the circle that came immediately before it, so omega sub n minus 1. So we are going to keep on doing it on and on and on and on. Let the sum of circumferences of all omega sub n for n greater than or equal to 0 be c, and the sum of areas of all omega sub n be a. We wish to find c squared divided by a, and write our answer in the form a times pi times the square root of b plus c times square root of 2, where a, b, and c are positive integers, and the greatest common divisor of b and c is 2. Well, we want to somehow relate the red eye of the circles because once we have a relationship between the radiuses, red eye, so let's say the radius of the second circle, omega sub 1, is r, then we can find the circumference and areas of every single circle because we know by symmetry, this diagram is proportional, we know we are going to keep on multiplying by the same factor. So if radius of omega naught is 1 and radius of omega 1 is r, radius of omega 2 is going to be r squared, then r cubed, and so on. To summarize, once we find r, we are basically done. But how do we find r? Now I will give you a pop quiz. There is a line. There is a line we can draw in the diagram such that it's going to immediately help us find R or help us progress very closely to finding R. What is that line? I'll give you the answer now. I'm talking about the line from the origin to the center of omega naught. Because what is the length of the segment? Well, we are going to start with 1 and to that we are going to add 2R because we are adding a diameter after that. Then we are going to have 2r squared, then 2r cubed, and so on. Now wait a bit. Do we know for sure that this line is going to behave the way we are describing it? That is, are we sure that this line goes through every single center and goes through every single point of tangency? And it turns out it does, in a way that's in accordance with our intuition. For those of you who have not seen the proof of it before, let's quickly prove it before going on. So in this diagram, we have two circles with their external tangents intersecting at point A. Let us let B and D be the centers of the circles and C be their point of tangency. We will prove that A, B, C, and D are collinear or they lie on the same line. We are going to start by showing that B, C, and D are collinear. So let's draw the segment BC and draw the segment CD. And to use the fact that C is a point of tangency, we will draw an external tangent. And it is well known that a radius drawn to the point of tangency forms a right angle. So that's 90 degrees. And using the same reasoning, this is 90 degrees. Meaning that this angle is 180. So B, C, and D are indeed collinear. So we have shown that this is one segment. Now how do we add A to the picture? Let's ignore the segment BD for now. So let's ignore C for the moment. First, examining segment AB, and we gotta use the fact that these two are tangent lines. So let's draw 90 degree angles. We see that by hypotenuse leg, we know these two triangles are congruent. Consequently, these two angles are the same. So AB bisects angle A. Not only that, we can make exactly the same argument with AD. We can drop down two perpendiculars and proceed in the same way. And that's going to show AD bisects angle A as well. And of course, this shows that A, B, and D are collinear. And since B, C, and D are collinear and A, B, and D are collinear, we have shown that A, B, C, and D are in fact collinear. So we know every single point that we want lie on our circle. So we know the length of this entire segment is in fact 1 plus 2r plus 2r squared plus 2r cubed dot dot dot. 
We are halfway there, but before we go any farther, I'd like to take this time to recognize Theodore Liebrandt, who was the very first person to post a correct solution to this challenge problem last week. A huge shout out to Theodore Liebrandt. So let's go on. So we know 1 plus 2r plus 2r squared plus 2r cubed. Well, we have 1, and that's a geometric series with the first term of 2r and the common ratio of r. So a over 1 minus r gets us 2r over 1 minus r. Adding this up gets you 1 minus r plus 2r on the top. So that's 1 plus r. So that's what we wish to find. So how do we find it? Well, the easiest way is probably to use a trigonometry. So let's draw this line again. And we know, because this is y equals to x, we know this angle is 22.5 degrees. And that's telling us that sine of 22.5 is 1 over this entire thing. So 1 over x, and x is what we wish to find. And we can evaluate sine of 22.5 by using a half angle formula. We know sine of theta over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. And in this case, we know sine is going to be positive. So let's bash this out. We know sine of 22.5 is going to be square root of 1 minus cosine of 45 divided by 2. This is a square root of 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 over 2 or square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 over 4, combining these two. And we can take 1 half out to get 1 half times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. So that's 1 over x. But we wish to find just x, so we have to take reciprocal. So we actually care about 2 over square root of 2 minus square root of 2. And because we want our final solution such that every square root is in the numerator of the fraction, let's rationalize this. One way of doing it here is to multiply by square root of 2 plus square root of 2. Because if we do so, we are going to have a square root of 2 at the bottom. Because 2 squared minus 2 is going to be 2. And 2 divided by square root of 2, that's simply square root of 2. And this is a square root of 2 times this. That's a square root of 4 times a square root of 2. So we know this thing is 1 plus r over 1 minus r. Now we can go ahead and find r. But let's quickly go back and see what we want to find in the end. We wish to find c squared over a. And here is an idea. There is a chance that c squared over a is going to contain an expression similar to 1 plus r over 1 minus r. If that's the case, we may not need to go ahead and do all the algebra to find r. So let's look at what c squared over a is. So we know c is the sum of circumferences, and that's telling us c is a 2 pi times 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so on, because we are going to have 2 pi plus 2 pi r plus 2 pi r squared and so on. And this is a 2 pi times 1 over 1 minus r by the geometric series formula. And in the same way, our area is going to be pi times 1 squared plus r squared plus r squared squared plus r cubed squared and so on. So that's going to be pi times 1 over 1 minus r squared. In this case, the common ratio is r squared. So c squared over a is we're squaring this and dividing by this. So when we square this, we get 4 pi squared over 1 minus r squared. And when we multiply by 1 over a, we are going to get 1 minus r squared divided by pi. And this is going to be, we have a 4 pi when we cancel out the pi. And 1 minus r squared is the same thing as 1 plus r times 1 minus r. So when we divide by 1 minus r squared, we're going to have 1 plus r left on top and 1 minus r remaining down below. And here it is. We have 1 plus r over 1 minus r inside our expression. We know the value of that, so we are done. So we know that's the square root of 4 plus 2 times square root of 2, because 2 times square root of 2 is 2 times square root of 2. 
So we know our final answer is simply 4 pi times that expression or 4 plus 2 times the square root of 2.